just for those. Good. So, good morning. Uh, welcome to our. Um, uh, is it still May? It is still May. Yeah, our May edition of Book Club. And this month's book is the 22 Immutable Laws of Marker. But that was a word that you've hardly ever used in your life. So, so uh, before, have you, anybody used immutable before? Yeah. <laughs> the, if you're a software engineer, you've probably come across it a bit more. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, so irrefutable I've come across but uh, but not not immutable but uh, so you've got you've got to have something that stands out a little bit different there so, so you guys all know about uh, so I won't uh, go into that but uh, yeah, anybody watching on the on the uh, recordings please do come and join us you know it's the more people that are participating with this uh, the, the better because everyone's got a different viewpoint people read uh, and see things that other people don't. So it's really good to share those uh, those learnings you know, in real life. Uh, so this is our little book. Um, now, I first came across these guys, God, probably about 13, 14 years ago. Uh, one of their books, I'm not sure it was their first book, was called Positioning, uh, How to Position Your Brand in, in the Marketplace. And I was going to use that as the, the book club book, but it's actually a bit thicker than this one. And I think this one pretty much covers everything in that first first book anyway. So uh, and it's a lot quicker and easier to read. So so I, I decided to go for this book. Have, they have written a number of books. Yeah, they are very sort of, you know, they've come from an advertising marketing world, both run their own practices. So, you know, I think we can take what they are talking about as real life examples in it so uh, and seen as sort of you know heads in their you know heads in their in their world in what they actually do so uh, it'd be nice to have some younger authors though so i must uh, must try and sort of uh, find some some of the new guys because uh, they are looking a little i don't know if they're still alive uh, 26 we can't kind of long left if they are so uh, but, uh, oh there they are there uh, so, so we've got 22 chapters to get through then none of them are particularly long but i think you know we could talk about you know each chapter in quite a lot of detail so what i'll what i'll do is we'll we'll just sort of share these around and i suppose it's i think that the laws are, are fairly obvious i don't know if i found oh i didn't really sort of you know, realize that but i think when when you start talking about the brands that are in the book and the book is i mean it was first published i think 1994 so you know some of the case studies that they're using are a little bit old so it's always good to think about sort of newer versions of this but obviously we're trying to put this back into into a small business world as well you know how do we do that uh, and sometimes when you're looking at the big global players that's difficult to actually get your head around it and I know, you know, Bruce and Andy, you, you're looking at products and to bring into the marketplace. So, you know, this is quite good for that. Uh, you know, Gary, I know you've got a couple of acquisitions, positioning, you know, yourself in the market. So I still think there's, you may not use all of them, but there's one or two in here that I think for, for any business will be you know, really useful um, to, um, to think about where your brand is. And I was certainly with a, a client the other day and we're looking to sort of push their brand forwards and i sort of said well look you know you, you're trying to be all things to all people here and, and you're actually also trying to compete against the big player you know there's a there's a couple of big players in the marketplace and if you go head to head with these people a bit like going head to head with coke you know you're not going to succeed you, you have such a big budget and a lot of luck to be able to beat these people look at the book and find one of those other areas where you think you can exploit so, so it'd be good to sort of talk about that as we go through so first one is law of leadership so if you can be first so, so what was our what was our thoughts on this one then bruce so, um probably the I hardest think i think the hardest one to, <laughs> I think uh, one for um, yeah. Sometimes you yeah you can spend a long time 
you know, uh, thinking over uh, you know, your your product and you, know, you, you spend a lot of time you know, trying to get it just how you think it should be, you know, make it almost perfect. You know, by which time um, you know, the market opportunity you know, has gone and um, you know, perhaps you know, all the uh, you know, thinking you had trying to get the perfect product, actually it's not really what the, the market wanted anyway. Yeah. Um, so I think um, you know, getting something out, you know, if you see an opportunity, you see a gap, actually, um, it's good to get out there quickly. You know, something, even if it's not, um, you know, uh, not perfect. Yeah. Um, you're getting out quickly um, because being first, um, yeah, as, as the book says, um, yeah, it's it's the company that's first that's you know the memorable one. You know, even if the the you know, product's not quite so good, and you can obviously build on the product as as you go. Yeah. Uh, so I think that was yeah that was one of the the lessons or the, the one that I remember anyway. Um, yeah. And then we've got you know, think of an example recently that's that that's happened. I know he uses um, you know, some examples here of uh, his, his main ones: uh, USA Today, really relevant. You know, Coke, obviously, IBM. Tesla's got to be a good example, right? I, that's what I was thinking. You know, te Tesla's you know first, but then I was thinking, well, actually, the first electric car that was talked about was obviously clive sinclair's yes c5 so well, being the the market. that is stretching the definition of car <laughs> <laughs> electric personal transport so, yes. um you have milk floats <laughs> yeah but uh but say you know sometimes you know again you you can innovate and have you know the first product but actually it's it's the usability and as one of the later things is about perspective it's not about the product itself it's about how it's seen in the mind's eye of the individual and that's that's what you're trying to create so sometimes you've got to get out there you know get it out and that's what i think tesla did really well you know the first first car they came out with was a two-door sports car mm. it was very expensive you know so it was almost like a Let's test the market. Let's see what how the market is. Is the market ready for this yet? You know, can we produce it? Can we actually produce, you know, a really fast car and get people talking about it? And when they did, they could then say, right now, obviously, you've then got to get the backing of a lot of money to then go and build the sort of you know the gigafactories and uh, and build the Model S. But uh, but yeah, you know, Tesla first to market, very dominant now, and it's it's. Everyone else is trying to play catch up and struggling. Um, and I think let's let's come back to that when we look at some of the other ones because I think it it does fall into that as well. So, so I think that it's it's really good. You know, if you can be get your product out there, as you said, Bruce. You know, don't worry too much about it. it may not be perfect, but get people talking about you know your brand. To what it actually does, um, and you know, later on he talks about you know dominating a word, you know, dominating a phrase, so that you you become synonymous with that particular you know um, action or that concept. So if you can't be first, and I, I love this one. You know, I think the. Uh, was it the, the Lindbergh and Hinkler? You know, no one remembers Hinkler. Um, but then he says, you know, who was the third? Was it the third person across the, the Atlantic? Billy Earhart. And it was, yeah, it was Earhart. So ch change the category and be, be the first woman across. So be the first something else. To, uh, so. Uh, what what was your take from the law category then, Andy? Yeah, I think that it made sense, and I think a lot of times you you know there are sometimes disadvantages to being outright first, um, particularly in technology. You've got to spend a lot of money educating the market if mm. it's a completely new field. Um, but there are lots of opportunities to come in and. Yeah, create a new category, do things slightly differently, um, 
and yeah, be be known for, you know, I mean, you'd go back to the Tesla example, you could say that, you know, yes, there were some electric vehicles around before Tesla created the Roadster, but because they they created the category of, if you like, luxury high performance electric vehicles yeah um then you know that's that's what they now own yeah so, uh, yeah yeah it's uh and i think yeah that when you are first you are potentially then pigeonholed in that particular slot so actually being second and seeing where the market's gone and then redefine your own category around that you can come across come across stronger and if you, if you look at uh, you know apple you know they weren't the first in the mp3 market were they no but they they took it to a slightly different level you know with, with itunes mm. um, and therefore they could see well okay the market's there but actually what people want is over here so we're going to go over here and dominate that particular part of it. So. yeah i had some thoughts about apple for uh, some of the later chapters yeah yeah i mean you, i think we find that you know, really good brands will, will fit into a lot of these you know how, yeah. how they've actually done it yes but i think in, there's also some nuances between what what they say in this book and um sort of Simon, some of simon sinek's stuff yeah um and actually you know some of the things that they say you know oh don't do this it'll never work you know there are lots of examples of where actually it has worked right. and i think the subtleties that they miss in this book is probably more some of the stuff um that comes out in um start with why yeah and you know not just about you know it's not just about leading in a category it's about people understanding what your business stands for yeah 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 that'd be good i look forward to that see what come up with but, um and you know i think the you know if you look at the japanese cars they learn as i say fairly early on but you know when toyota brought in lexus as a subcategory because they knew that toyota was synonymous with this particular car and they wouldn't be able to no one would buy a high value toyota um whereas he says in the book vw didn't do that yes um so you know vw tried to sell you know after the beetle more expensive cars and the market said no you just you know we just know you for selling you know cheap ugly cars <laughs> it's probably a bit harsh on folks <laughs> <laughs> but then but then you know if you think about that you know what did volkswagen do instead in the end well they have a lot of brands now don't they just bought the brands didn't they <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so we won't create them we'll just buy you know uh we'll, we'll buy audi we'll buy lamborghini we'll buy is it uh bentley um and we'll buy these sort of sub you know we'll buy the brands that are already in existence yeah stay out skoda <laughs> yeah. they, they say they they man managed to bring um Volkswagen down a category as well through you know through the Skoda brand hmm. um, so uh, but I don't know about you but oh and then then I suppose they bought Seat didn't they which I don't know it's where where really Seat fits but it's I think it's more the younger sporty sort of side of it you know hmm. Volkswagen's a bit more yeah. ask Bruce he's got one I have oh, he's got one yeah <laughs> yeah so, He's got a fiat now. He's he's, he's well from the. Uh... <laughs> cool. Okay, so if you can't be first, then find a subcategory and dominate that. Uh... So, Gary, what about law of the mind? Yeah, it's about creating that brand image, isn't it? You know, you, like nowadays, you don't don't search the internet; you Google it. It's 
being first and being first in mind of every prospect sort of thing. Yeah. In your market, like you say, with, with NMT, it's for us, it's Roro, you know? Yeah. We, we're, we're, we're a big global shipping company. There's lots of big global shipping companies, but, you know, for, for us, Roro, the roll, roll and roll off is what we're, in, you know, what we're trying to put forward um, to, to our customers and our prospects sort of thing, and, and, and it works. Yeah. Um, like you say, being first, you know, we don't have vacuum cleaners, we, we have Hoovers. Yeah. So, you know, that, that sort of thing. So, you know, if not first in the market, but you can be first in people's minds, then I think you've, uh, you're have onto a winner. Yeah. I would, and Andy, would this sort of pick up where you were talking about the Simon Sinek start with why, you know, the purpose led business is very much about being in that person's mind as who they are and what they're all about? Yes, but it's it's distinct from what's in this book. I mean, um, uh, so take for example, say Dyson. Uh, I think in this book they would say, "What on earth are Dyson doing making hand dryers?" Because Dyson yeah. are known for vacuum cleaners and yeah. you know very successful at it. Yeah. Um, whereas, you know, I think. Simon Sinek would say, well, Dyson are known for innovation and they're known for, you know, taking products that have been around a long time and, you know, giving them a complete design overhaul and coming up with something funky. Mm. Um, and it, so it's, you know, and, and I, I think Simon Sinek is a lot closer to the truth on that because it's not about... Um, it's not about being known for a category. It's about being known for a purpose, if you like. Yeah, and uh, I suppose I hadn't thought about the Dyson, you know, the brand extension. But, you know, I mean, they're doing um, hair dryers, curling tongs, um, you know, fans. They're making a robot now. They're making a robot. To, uh, I, mean, I suppose my my only you know because he does talk he does talk about it it's over a period of time potentially does it devalue the initial product itself so if dyson had done right what we'll do dyson is the the who let's say it's the vacuum cleaner you know, yeah. the triple cyclone vacuum cleaner that's that's what it is if it started a brand new brand to do those other products could he have done them as well? Do, do they would they, do they need to be done as as a dice yeah as a Dyson hair dryer or could he have created a brand new brand around you know that sort of thing? Would it have sold as well because of the technology and what's in it, but not be sort of you know subject to well I'm drying my hair with a with a Hoover. <laughs> Yeah, uh, we won't, in a way, we won't know yeah. because you know it's been done. But yeah, I can see, you know, that you know, it's it, that some of these products are very, very sexy, but because they've got the Dyson mm -hmm. brand on it, in my head, it's you know, well, Dyson make vacuum cleaners. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a fair point. Um, I guess maybe what it comes down to is. If if they had an infinite marketing budget, then they probably could have done better by creating a new brand. But what they've done is to make use of the brand recognition they already have yeah. in order to save some money. But, but that that's what he goes on in the book that you know that people is then done by a budget. Yeah rather than actually thinking about these immutable laws yes so i mean you, you use the example of you know apple and the the ipod um so would apple be in a better place if they'd rather than you know because apple were making computers right so why would they make an mp3 player so would they be in a better place if they'd launched a new brand for the ipod hmm.
don't, I, and in a way, I don't know. I mean, it is the, I mean, I think the brand extension is talking about extending it too far beyond. Yeah. You, know, you keep the is... brand, you know, extending, 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 extending it. So, so it's a bit like, you know, a Mars bar and a, and a Mars ice cream. You know, are, yes. they, are they close enough that actually they do work yeah. together? But then I, my, my thing was about, I bought some Kit Kats the other day and they were bloody crunchy Kit Kats. And I'm going, oh, I don't want a bloody, I just want a bloody Kit Kat. You know? <laughs> I want a crunchy Kit Kat. It's, yeah. Some of the brands do it with limited edition. They do a limited edition, you know, so it's a short mm -hmm. run. We, we'll test yeah. the market, see what it is. Um, but it's yeah. almost like they're, they're any, it, it, it does talk about later, you get, they, people get bored. Well, we've got to create something new. We've got to create something mm. new. We've got to create something new. And, and so they, they, they put their things in it. But he's saying that the, the proof over time is it actually does devalue the original. Yes. But I mean, if, if you, you know, you talked about the MP3 player earlier and, you know, if, because I think it was, was it Dell that produced an MP3 player that nobody bought? Yeah, I think, I think they did. And yeah. Apple produced an MP3 player and everyone bought it. Yeah. And it's, you know, they were both known for making computers. Yeah. So there's clearly a difference between Apple and Dell and it's not, that you know it's not that they were in a different category because they both were selling computers it's you know if if you if you believe simon sinek then it's actually it's about their their purpose and people understanding what they were all about yeah. and you know dell were about you know business and what have you and apple were about empowering the individual yeah so, um it's yeah it's a it's a distinction in in terms of their their purpose right? yeah and i think that yeah that to me does come back to this law in law of the mind in the mind of the consumer mm. you know apple built a tribe you know they, they they went very specific we're going for those and it was you know the creatives it was the innovators you know these these are the people that we're these is our target market they went for the mass market <clears throat> and built a very successful business on it but the mass market don't think like the mm. tribe and therefore with a tribe <clears throat> if you bring out something new oh yeah yeah no I've, I've bought into the ethos of apple and therefore i can extend that brand mm -hmm. whereas you know dell weren't in their mind you know in their mind they weren't that for their consumer and therefore they couldn't do the brand extension um, so uh, cool good so law of the mind so really yeah don't have to be first but you you've got to have that connection and and the perception which is really what i mean these two could have been done sort of you know together i think but you know, marketing is not a battle of products. It, it, it is about perceptions. And it, to me, that was interesting. That was Honda outsells Toyota in the USA, yet Toyota sell, outsells Honda in Japan. Because both people perceive the same product in a, in a different way. So, so really understanding that is, is key. So, Bruce, what was your... Yeah, your yeah that was perception. really interesting. Um, yeah, the Honda one I liked. Um, yeah, I know my uh, my dad uh, likes his Hondas. Um, yeah. And yeah, in uh, in Japan, um, yeah, I think was it? Uh, I think it's motorbikes, isn't it? That, yeah, uh, Honda were first. Were, yeah, yeah. So there's, there's, you know, making a monkey bike. You know. To... Yeah. So that's that's what's in you know the Japanese mind. You know, Honda make motorbikes, make very good motorbikes. So yeah, uh, although the car that that they were trying to sell in you know Japan was. Um, you know, identical to the one in America, you know, yeah. just a perception as to, you know, what it'd be like. Yeah, you know, they're just thinking, well, you know, you, you make motorbikes, you're obviously not going to make very good cars because <laughs> they're different. Um, yeah, it's, yeah, really interesting how 
an identical product, identical spec, identical performance, you know, can really sell very, very differently mm. depending on the perception that the, you know, the country has of, of that brand. So, you know, uh, I suppose it says, you know, in terms of marketing, you know, getting, yeah, you know, trying to build a, a, a perception, you know, if you're yeah. for, uh, an area, um, yeah, you can do very well, even if the, the product behind it is not, you, know, you don't have to focus so much on the product. Um, yeah. Uh, I don't know the full, the full thing, but I'm, I, I seem to remember that, uh, you know, back in the, in the 70s, early 80s, you know, Datsun were, were at, became known for rusty cars. And uh, yeah, they probably were the, the least reliable of the Japanese, you know, Toyota and Honda were more, they, they got in their quality right quite early. Datsun seemed to sort of lag the field. So Datsun actually changed their name to Nissan. And managed to break that, you know, well, Datsuns go rusty. You know, I know that because I had one. Um, but Nissans, you know, we've, we've changed, you know, they, they brought their, spec up to the levels of the other competitors and managed to do that uh, i think a really good one at the moment is uh, hyundai and kia i think how hyundai and kia have changed the i think their brand perception and i think they're, they're actually making some of the best cars out there at the moment you know mm. on, on looks and <clears throat> whereas 20 20 30 years ago they were the ugliest cars you, you could think of mm. Um, yeah. I think that you know the perception is just so strong. Yeah, you know, my dad, you know, the Hondas, you know, in his mind, you know, Hondas are you know really good quality, high quality, reliable yeah. cars. But the fact of the matter was each Honda he had, he had problems. And <laughs> they were a lot worse than the problems I had with yeah. my box of Cavalier or my other cars. I remember one, yeah, I think <laughs> one Honda drive shaft uh, completely snapped. Another one, the gearbox completely went. Yeah, and that was just like a, a few weeks outside of the warranty. Yeah. And with all these big things that you wouldn't really expect to happen, yeah, in his mind, it, oh, I was just unlucky. You yeah. Know, it's, yeah, they're really, really good cars. They're really well built there. But yeah, he's experienced and he still bought more Hondas. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, and then that, and that, that shows that that's what we're, you know, we're up against is that, that perception is once, once somebody's made a statement and a, and believes in something, they will do everything in their power to justify it. Mm. So I believe Hondas are, are reliable, you know, from what I've been told, what I've seen, or what I've experienced. Mm. And then when it doesn't go, oh, well, I must have a, a dodgy one. <clears throat> and um, yeah, and you think, you know, what Skoda did, you know, to, to turn their brand around. But and it, and I think in a way, it probably takes a generation to to break down that. Mm barrier you know i still think skoda's is you know a little bit sort of low end gp probably wouldn't have one mm. um but i can imagine you know 10 20 20 year younger people would look at it and go well i've only ever known decent skoda's mm. um and then and then they see the sort of ones that have been sort of you know the, the vrs and the sexy ones and that becomes their sort of baseline model. So, <clears throat> so, it, so it is, you know, and the other one was Campbell's Soup. You know, Campbell's Soup is number one in the United States and Heinz is number one soup in the United Kingdom. You know? Hmm. Yeah, so it was Casey who got there first, I suppose. Um, who got there in the in the mind's eye, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. So, so uh, Cool. Okay. So that was sort of, you know, <clears throat> it's all about yeah, getting the in you've got to understand your consumer, get into their mind. And it's not what you make, it's not about the product, it's about their perception of your product. That's that's what you're trying to dominate. So you've got to try and influence their perception rather than worry about the reality. And I go back, I mean, you're you're all too young probably, but uh, you know, VHS and Betamax back in the 70s. You know, Betamax was the superior product, you know, in, in every way. But the marketing and the perception went to VHS and it, it knocked, you know, Betamax out of the marketplace completely. So, 
there. So law of focus then. <clears throat> so owning a word in people's mind. And I, and I do love this one. I think this is this is really, really, if you can do this, as, as, as we've talked about, you know, who's uh, uh, no one says I'm going to dice in the house, do they? Uh, but uh, so what's uh, what's your thoughts on this one, then, Andy? Yeah, I, mean, I agree. It's a it's a, a very powerful concept. It's uh, yeah, if you can if you can get that, then it's it's that's got real sticking power to it. Um, it's interesting though that you know um, he talks about you know Xerox. You know, didn't really get anywhere with anything else, um, kind of almost because of their success with copiers. Yeah. Um, but you, you look at Google, for instance, and you know, Google definitely own, you know, the, the, the search engine you know, yeah. the search. Um, but um, you know, yet they've been extremely successful with Android. Um, you know, and you know they're also well known for doing a lot of other things, like you know driverless cars and. Uh, yeah. And what um, but so, I think Android's an interesting one because that you know I reckon if you surveyed a hundred people, over fifty percent wouldn't know that Android is Google. Hmm. So yeah, they, I suppose they, they didn't call it the you know, the Google phone. Yeah, they created a new word. Yeah, they, they created a new brand mm. that sits alongside it. Okay, it's owned by yes. Google. It's, it's, it's the Toyota Lexus. Yeah, we, yes. We're not going to extend our search engine into this. We're going to create a brand new brand for it. Yeah, yeah, that's a fair point. It's, yeah, it's, you know, we were just going through all the VWs just now, weren't we? And it's not like we don't know that a Skoda is a VW the same as an Audi is a VW. <clears throat> we we know but we still have different perceptions yeah um because the the different brand names that they put on it so yeah that's a good point yeah yeah and, and, and this it goes back to the the mind the story is different as well mm. you can by having multiple brands you can have different stories mm. if you have a brand an extended brand it's you can't you know, how can you have a new story around, you know, crunchy Kit Kat? You know, th there is no story behind it. It's, you know, so it's just a, you're just you're living off the fact that it's a Kit Kat and a crunchy. It's, you know, some some marriages just don't work. So. <laughs> you, if you're watching Nestle, then uh, stop doing it. Uh, um, cool. Anything, Gary, what about you for this this one? Again, for me, I think it reflects uh, the, 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 the law of the mind, isn't it? Like you say, if you've got that that, that word in the, the prospect's mind and that focus, then, like you say, it connects them together. Like you're saying, Google, the internet search. And um, again, for us, for NMT, it's that row, row word sort of thing. Um, yeah, it's about, yeah. So what, so what, what did happen because they, they were obviously had the marketing advertising marketing but campaign for lotus <laughs> so the the uh the, the software oh, the lotus one two three and two, three so what 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 happened what, any, any thoughts of what happened to lotus then and why excel smashed it yeah, say so for, for, for lotus i mean for, for, for me that was on its way out when i first started work sort of thing. yeah um, hmm. But like you say, Microsoft, you know, took the market, didn't they? They took the the whole idea of office software rather than the individual um, parts of the software. They just um, moved into a, a separate market and owned the whole yeah. office Perfect. software um, market, I believe. I think it had to be well executed as well. I mean, you know, Excel has always been a decent product and then they just built you know, Word and PowerPoint and what have you around it as well. Yeah. Such that when people are saying, well, shall I buy this or shall I buy this? And well, actually, 
you know, that's going to do everything for me. Um, and that's just a point solution. Um, and, and the quality between the two is, you know, pretty similar. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, at the time, feature sets were that much simpler that it was easier to create something that would reliably import files from other programs. So, you know, you could buy Excel and still open your latest one, two, three files with it. Yeah. So, um, you know, it, it kind of, you know, made a sort of a, a, a proposition that was too good to refuse. If, if yeah. you know. I mean, I, I mean I'm, I'm old enough to be, you know, I was at the, literally at the first, the first spreadsheet, you know, um, uh, VisiCalc, um, there was, I mean, there, there was about four or five different spreadsheets and, you know, Excel wasn't the greatest. And mm. then, then I do remember the, you know, Lotus 123 came out and it was a little bit like, it's about the same time as Apple came out. So there were the Apple users and the and the Microsoft users, and you know you both looked down their nose at the other one. And there were Lotus users and Excel users. I, I yeah, my my personal view is because Microsoft was doing the operating system that they were therefore able to promote Word, Excel, because you've got the operating system. So <clears throat> yeah, it's like almost a giveaway of the Excel the Word. I don't think I ever paid for Excel and Word at the time. You know, you just grab somebody's disks and you knew it would integrate into Microsoft or the in the mind's eye, it integrated better into the operating system than because Lotus were the first with groupware. They were the first to do the office. Mm -hmm. Microsoft brought Office in later. Uh, okay. Um, yeah. And but they were already in place in the mind that you've got the oper Microsoft operating system, therefore Excel, Word, PowerPoint must work better in their operating system than a third party system like Lotus. Or, or was it distribution <clears throat> relationships in the sense that, you know, most PCs were shipping with Windows, therefore they were already selling products to the PC manufacturers. If they can then offer a, a good deal to those manufacturers to say look, for an extra whatever it is you can have an office license on there as well yeah um and more people will buy your product yeah. or like they often do now i think you know or, you know it, everything will ship with a trial license um so people can start using it and yeah then they've got to pay for it after 30 days or something so. yeah I, I, I think I, that's what I think it was. It was the, the link with the operating system mm -hmm. that allowed them to be in the mind's eye of more people than Lotus. Mm. If I just bought a laptop and I was new to it, I wouldn't know that there was two. It was, it was just mm. to me. So I yeah. said they were able to dominate on that way. So. Yeah. I think that that's you know what you're saying about you know you're new to it and people don't know. I think that that is an interesting one because a lot of you know most people know about cars so the you know the, what we were saying about you know, perceptions of different brands and things like that is quite widely held um and obviously you get regional variations and what have you but it's it's going to take a long time to change perceptions whereas uh he also gave the example of Heinz with baby food yeah and you know i you know he was like oh why do heinz do baby food and i, I was thinking why wouldn't heinz do baby food? The, like in my mind heinz have always done baby food i don't know when heinz started doing baby food and whether this is a you know uh, another uk us difference or what have you but it did get me thinking well when did I pay any attention to baby food before I had kids? Yeah, yeah. So if Heinz had only started doing baby food, you know, 17 years ago, um, then they still would have, you know, before 17 years ago, I had no concept of yeah. 
sold baby food. It was only relevant when you had a baby. Exactly. So, yeah. Um, and that's same, and that, that's I think that's what you've always got to think. The market is always moving, so there's always an opportunity. You know, if if there's a new generation, you know, coming through, then you can still get into their mind's eye for them. And mm-hmm. I mean, I, I don't know whether it's yeah, if if for them baby food isn't a great money spinner, you know, what it potentially does do, you know, if you're if you're grown up as a baby on Heinz. <laughs> And you're 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 sort of reading the brand very early on. I'm sure it's not down at that psychological level. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, I think when you're eating baby food, you're a little young for reading. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I don't know. You used to eat baby food, do you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so um, okay. So law of exclusivity then. So two companies cannot own the same word in the prospect's mind. Bruce, what's this was a fairly short little yeah um yeah i think uh yeah it's quite clear really um yeah there's yeah there's no point you know if it's if there's a big company out there that really does hold that that word in prospects minds there, there's no point you know coming up with something that's perhaps in your mind a bit better but yeah it's the exactly same word because you're just not going to go get anywhere um so yeah, you need to have your own word, yeah, your own, um, yeah. I'm not, probably not much more to say. <laughs> no, it's, I mean it's like yeah, don't don't try and attack it. You know, Burger King tried to attack you know McDonald's, but it already owned Fast. I thought that that was interesting. The the Burger King, you know, the, the fact that you know what they should where they should have really dominated is the taste you know mm-hmm. and not try to be a mcdonald's and they they just seem to get it they're saying they just got it wrong all the time mm-hmm. but, uh, and they didn't think about you know okay let's set create a separate category you know like the adult side of things you know to move away from, you know mcdonald's is known for kids you know at the time ronald mcdonald and you know mm-hmm. burger king is the adult's burger um, Mm-hmm. And because they didn't dominate that space, then the likes of Five Guys and Gourmet Burger have been able to come in and, and in effect, dominate that market. So mm-hmm. if you get it wrong, you do get sort of left behind. So, so Lord of the Ladder, then, so knowing where you are on the uh, on the rungs, oh, this is quite interesting. So, I think actually, I think it was these three. So, Lord of the Ladder, Duality, and then what's the next one? Uh, yeah, opposite. I mean, these three work quite well together. So, if we know if we know that there's a ladder, then what we how we position ourselves depend on how the leader positions us positions them. So, so the Avis, you know, Avis is number two, so we try harder, you know. But again, in people's mind's eye, they'd get a better service with with them because, you know, they want to be number one. You know, they're, they're trying hard. And that number one, if you're in the number one spot, then you're the least risky. <clears throat> and that was always the IBM thing, wasn't it? That no, no one gets sacked for buying IBM. So, if you buy IBM and it goes wrong, well, it's not not my fault. So, so it might not be the best solution, but uh, you know, it's it's the most obvious solution. So, so go. What, what's your what's your thought on those three chapters? Then duality, opposite, and ladder. I'd say from the law of the ladder is more basically it's about positioning, isn't it? I think, like you say, with Avis, yeah. it was trying to be we are number two, so. You know, we'll try harder, but we'll be cheaper. Um, you know, for us, for MT, it's very much, you know, we, we, we are the cheapest. Um, but sometimes, you know, the, the service isn't, you know, top notch sort of thing. So it's yeah. like, maybe like EasyJet, I don't know, sort of, you know, we, we're not, they're not the biggest airline sort of thing, but we're, we're cheap and cheerful. So it's that, that, that law of the ladder trying to, 
you know, position yourselves and, and use where you are in the market to build that brand for you. Yeah. Um, I think the law, the law of duality is like you say, I think for, for longing, <clears throat> excuse me, for the, the more mature markets, like I say, it always boils down just to, to the two names. So like your, the example given with Duracell and EverReady, um, Coca-Cola versus Pepsi, McDonald's versus Burger King, you know, eventually as it, you know, matures, it's, it's between just the two sort of thing. So I don't know if that's true or like you say, it's, it's still very much today is Coca-Cola versus Pepsi. Yeah. Um, you know, Apple versus Microsoft. It's, you know. Yeah. But it does, you know, it does, I think, it's, think where it was, but it does go on to say that eventually all markets then fragment. So they, they all sort of end up with two or three, so sort of two, two main players, and then they, then they break up and then smaller players come into the market. And if you look at, I mean, again, cars is a good example, you know, Ford and GM, you know, for years dominated the market. You know, back in the 1900s, there were, there were hundreds of different brands. And gradually they reduced down to two. And now, you know, if you think about it, you know, in, again, show me age, my day, you know, you either drove, you know, a, a, a Ford Cortina or, or then became a, uh, what was the one before, a Sierra, yeah, or a Cavalier. And that's it. You know, you, you, we'd, we'd go on holiday, and you, you'd count the number of Fords, and you'd count the number of Vauxhalls. That that those were the two main brands. And you look at the market now, and there's there's far more brands in the marketplace now than there have been, you know, than the, there ever were, because then they find their own niches, and and people sort of realise I don't want the choice of two. I want some some diversity. Uh, within that uh, I think for me that was part of a theme throughout the whole of the book because of the age of the book and like you say there is no internet sort of thing so this idea of like you say the, 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 the scale of things now there's so much choice hmm. for, for everything I think that's more like a more of a modern sort of issue rather than like you say the age of the book is like 20 odd years ago now is, is could that be it like you say as you know the more every has just more choice of everything now i i think i think there i think communication is a lot quicker so it's a sort of, you know but then in the old days if you had to communicate you had tv radio a newspaper that that was it you know so everybody watched tv listened to a radio read a newspaper so your mark your market was there now you know there's so many diverse ways to actually try and get your message across to people. Um, and, you know, I think the, the sub brand, you know, getting into people's minds perhaps is easier because, you know, we, we can find our little, our little tribe now sort of online, whereas before it was probably more difficult. Um, and therefore, these pockets of people, like-minded people, perhaps are easier to sort of identify to. So, Bruce, any any thoughts on that? Just um, good question. Uh, yeah, it's interesting. I think mean, yeah, there's still yeah, if, uh, yeah, there's it's still quite a few areas where you can think of two two companies that are dominating. Um, you know, even though yeah, there are areas where you can see yeah, there is a lot of choice. Um, mm. So yeah, I, I'm not too sure <laughs> really. Yes, yeah, say maybe the world has changed and yeah, communications are are better. Um, um, yeah, I, no more to say really. Yeah, I think, I think that for me the it's that ebb and flow that, mm. and it, it's probably a two forces that are, are pulling and pushing at the same time. You know, on one hand, actually as human beings we don't want choice because making choices is difficult it takes brain power it's hard work but then if we have no choice we don't want that either so therefore we want more choices so almost like it when you've got a thousand 
I don't want to make a choice of a thousand. So, so it naturally reduces down. Now I've got one or two. Well, now I don't want to have to do one or two. I want a few more. So, so the market contracts and then it's, I think it's doing this all the time. Okay. You know, it's moving in, it's moving out, moving in, moving out. So understanding, I suppose, where the market is, you know, is it, is it, is it an expanding market? Is it a contracting market? <clears throat> you know, it's probably an interesting one to see. Um, and you, and you, you tend to see this in the acquisition. You know, if, you, if you look to acquisitions within a particular industry, when there's acquisitions going on, the market is contracting. Yeah. You know, if the acquisition starts stopping, then it's probably a good sign that it, niches are going to start to spring up. I think particularly in the consumer space, I'm wondering whether um, <laughs> online reviews have actually changed things a bit. Um, you know, 30 years ago, all you had to go on when you, you know, you went out to the shops to buy something is, oh yeah, you know, I trust that brand. So when I buy this thingamabob, I trust it's going to be a reasonable quality. Yeah. Um, now you can jump onto Amazon and, you know, you see stuff from yeah. a brand you've heard of, but you'll also see, you know, a dozen different products from Chinese brands that you, you've never heard of in your life. Um, but you've got, you know, a thousand customer reviews for each one yeah. and you can actually, you know, form your own opinion and kind of say, well, I, I may have never heard of these people, but if a thousand people have given it five stars, yeah. um, it, it can't be that bad. Yeah. And it's half the price. So, because yeah. I've, I've done that with um, elect electric toothbrush. Mm. So, you know, we went to Oral B, you know, electric toothbrush for years. Mm. <clears throat> and then the heads are just so bloody expensive. And, you know, I was getting a bit fed up with it. So I went on to Amazon and there was a, a brand fairy wheel fairy wheel mm -hmm. <clears throat> which is a very nice looking sonic toothbrush and it was about 20 quid plus eight heads which was cheaper than so and the reviews are all you know five star reviews thousands of them mm. <clears throat> so i bought it really good you know perfectly you know as good if not better than the, the oral b one mm. and um, and then i went back to by the replacement heads off Amazon and it and fairy will had gone it wasn't on there anymore I thought why, why would they not be on there so I you google it and they were kicked off of Amazon because they'd falsified their reviews oh <laughs> so uh so yeah so but, yeah, but exactly genuinely you thought it was a good product so. but it's and it, I think it is a good product so you know it's, it's very well made. It's last, you know, the heads last longer. Mm. You know, there's nothing wrong with the product, but Fed cheated the system and yes. got punished as a result. Uh, um, mm. But, you know, in a way they were cheating, but they were living up to their hype. So they weren't sort of ripping people off, but you know, they broke, they broke the, the law, the law of Amazon, which isn't, so it should be the 20, 23rd law. Shouldn't it? <laughs> yes. yeah, don't piss off Amazon or eBay. Uh, yes okay so that that's sort of you know seven law of the ladder law of duality it will eventually go down to two Law of the opposite so you know if you're going you know decide what the bigger player is doing and then decide what your strategy is and then know that over time the category will then divide again so it, it Starts with lots, contracts, and then it expands again, and it's doing this all the time. So, and it's knowing where you are on that. So, <clears throat> so the law, law of perspective, chapter eleven. Oh, me. <clears throat> so this is this is really about you know mark, mark you've got to 
do marketing as a you know as a long time long term um effect and there was the i think was this the one where he talks about that you do a like a promotion and you get a big spike but then it falls off is it the cabbage pat doll one? Oh yeah and uh I remember the cabbage patch doll one but i don't remember which chapter it was in uh, i think this one was more about the like you say the perspective of the, from the customer's point of view like with the couponing if you're a sale company if you're always doing the sales yeah you know it's okay it's a, it's a sales you, you know um, it's why would i pay full price if 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 you're just still constantly running sales sort of thing i just have to wait sort of thing and then it builds that image of oh that's just a you know they're just trying to shift stuff yeah i think um i think i think the, the good example was the, the, the skoda that you used yeah say you know sometimes it takes such a long time to, to yeah. change um so like you say if you screw something up at the beginning it can then take a long time to to try, try and correct it sort of thing but if you get it right you know then you know like the honda and the cars yeah. It sticks in the head, yeah. Not just for you, but for your, for your family as well. And I, I think he's then bringing this into the next one, which is the law of extension, um, where you know this irresistible pressure to to, to boost sales, so cause light, you know, um, mm. uh, Michelob, you know, they get a new product out there, they get a, a quick boost in, but it actually has an inherent impact on the the mainline sales. Whereas if they just played the long game with the existing sales, you know, so the boring bit of just doing what you do time after time is, is dull. <clears throat> um, and, um, you know, rather than constantly fiddling with it, you know, and trying to get a, a quick win, which looks good on the, on the PL account, but over, over a long period, will have a detrimental effect on you so i did like the uh, uh the donald trump thing at the the end of that chapter uh, who'd have known eh, that in 1994 that that man that bank you know 1.4 million in debt to save the long term became prime minister to zero dear so it must be turning in their grave to, so then, then we got the of the line extension, which I think we've we have sort of talked about here. Um, and it, so, you know, I, I think you know the, the points that you you raised, Andy. You know, sometimes the extension is enough; it, it works. You know, but I think this is that people keep pushing it and pushing it mm -hmm. and pushing it and. Pushing it and Okay, what's what is the next thing that we can we can, you know, this brand could be doing, and, mm. and it ultimately just ends in failure. Mm. If, you, if you extend it too far, you know, then you've just devalued the whole the whole of the brand. Any any thoughts on examples of that? I was just trying to think of, apart from my crunchy Kit Kat, obviously. <laughs> what examples where it hasn't worked? Yeah. Yeah, where 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 a brand has been extended, you know, probably one too far. Well, the Virgin brand, the Virgin. Well, brand. They, yeah. they just did, yeah. they just they just did everything, didn't they? They, they did, but they, but they at the same time they made it work. And I think again that comes back to what what they're known for. And I think Virgin you know, part of known them. for you know going into kind of stagnant industries and just really shaking things up. Okay. Uh, once it got to a point, it was actually worthwhile. They, they, I mean, the interesting. But they tried it with cola, didn't they? You know, they, yes. they saw they saw cola as being you know the two horse player. You know, can we come in and disrupt that marketplace? Mm. And, and the answer to that was no. <laughs> <laughs> but then you've got you've got to have a decent product. You know, you yeah. can't. I think that just says you know you, it, it, if they'd come up with a product that was better. Yeah, I mean that's the thing about. Cola is it's not going to be that different. It, no. It's cola. I mean, if you make it different, it's not cola anymore. It's, yeah. You know, whereas at least with you know 
some of the other industries that they went into, they did have something novel to, to offer. So, you know, with, with banking, it was, you know, they went in and created the, the one account and they were the, um, yeah. the, the, you know, the, the kind of combined mortgage and current account. Um, so they kind of invented the offset mortgage. Um, but even so, that, that's, di that's died. It will, they sold it to RBS, but I mean, that's, that's part of their strategy, isn't it? I think to, uh, to sell off these things. But then that comes back to then it, when they do sell it off and somebody's not running it with the same, again, Simon Sinek's, you know, hmm. use and purpose, they, they generally don't do particularly well, you know, like Virgin Rail, you know. Yes. You can't say that's a success, you know. It starts off disrupting, you know, because their whole thing is about <clears throat> we're going to bring better service into yeah. industries where there is no service. Mm. Um, but you know, yeah, I think Virgin ones that have worked Virgin Cosmetics, I think, is doing all right. And Virgin Media is obviously uh, Virgin Media's doing pretty well. Very, very, yeah, very successful. Um, the airline is still still flying. Yeah, yeah, still good. Yeah. Which. In, in this day and age is, uh, you know, they, they've outlasted quite a few other airlines. So, but, but yeah, again, you, I mean, we, we won't know, but, you know, Branson could have, you know, once he'd done Virgin, he could have done EasyJet, he could have done Ryanair. Mm. You know, he could have had other brands doing that particular thing. Mm. Does it? You know, do you need to extend a brand that is well known in one particular area that yeah, far? Yeah. That it, you know, mm. it does it loses its p potential? You know, once it gets beyond a certain yeah. level. I think is it the uh, law of the? It's not ego, is it? But it's something like that. What is it? We'll come. We'll come to it. We'll come to it. Yeah. So, so once we have extend the brand, then. You know, part of this is you've got to give up something. So you can't be all things to all people. You know, the, the, that sort of law of sacrifice. So, Bruce, what's your thoughts on this one? Um, well, yeah, it, it makes sense. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, having sort of, cut, sort of almost come back to the sort of one word again, you know, if you... Uh, you know, yeah you got that focus on that one thing that um yeah you're uh, really memorable for then you end up with uh you know, selling a lot more of it so yeah i think a strategy is looking at what you've got and then you know looking at okay which one is the one that's going to work and actually you know really focus on that and chop things off yeah. but those that don't do very well are the ones that they you know, try to keep all those different sections running and you know, don't have that strong message it all gets watered down um so yeah i think uh you know chopping things off uh yeah it can be a good strategy for yeah. uh making yourself stronger yeah phillips is a good example of that they went through a process um back ooh, late 90s i think it was where they shed loads and loads of different lines that they did because yeah. we, they started out with light bulbs and because they were work, you know, in order to make light bulbs, they had to get good with ceramics and things like that. By the end of the 90s, they were making like Philips toilets and things like that yeah. that you just yeah. wouldn't associate with, with the brand at all. Uh, and they just went through this process of just shedding all of this yeah. stuff that just didn't fit. <clears throat> yeah, no, I think that's a, that's a good good example. So uh, just hang on one one second. Uh, hello. Hi. Hello. I have no idea where Christopher Trace Place is, by the way. <laughs> so I'm driving around aimlessly because you said it was on the corner. I don't know what it's called. It's called Ridgeway Car. Where where are you? I'm driving around aimlessly in Bubs Lane. 
Can you stop and just put it in your car sat now? Just put Ridgeway cars. What does it look like? Is it next to Brad Beers? Uh, it's next to Brad Beers. Yeah, Brad Beers. Um, removal and storage. storage. Yeah, it's it's, well, a, it's not called. It's called. Is it? What's it called? Romsey Car Centre. No, no. It's the other side. It's the other side to Romsey Car Centre. Romsey Car Factors. No, it's the other side of Brad Beers. Other side of Brad Beers. To so go from Romsey Car Centre past Bradby's and it's literally it's literally right past Bradby's it's just before the train did. Oh, tiny hole corner. yeah right, okay, okay cool Bye. <clears throat> I thought I'd muted myself then <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, sorry. <clears throat> my wife got lost uh, <clears throat> so, yeah, or sacrifice is you know give up something, um, and then law of attributes and law of singularity. Uh, oh, what have I got? Oh, law of attributes. Yeah, for every attribute, there's an opposite attribute. So, again, it's I think this was to me was a bit of a repeating itself one. That uh, you know, go for the opposites. You know, find that other people are doing something, then you know, go somewhere else. You know, choose your, choose, choose you know, choose your niche in a in a different area to somebody else that's already in there. So, I think it's just helpful to have. You know, I think the the value in that chapter is the illustrations around you know, on the face of it the you know the people in the market already the attributes that they're putting forward are clearly going to be positive attributes and so you know you in order to come up with an opposite attribute you you need to think creatively to come up with a positive opposite attribute so if somebody says high quality you know you don't come in and say oh we're low quality <laughs> yeah you come in and say we're low cost or yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I think you know the it just fits in quite nicely with the next one, which was candor. That uh, you know, if you have got a negative, mm. then don't hide it. You know, like listering. You know, to make make that your selling point. You know, if it tastes bad, then it must be good for you because it's medicine. You know, that's that's the big thing. So, and that you know, but in a way. By doing that, you do leave the door open then for other brands to come in and say, well, we're the, you know, the nice tasting mouthwash. Yes. Uh, and I think you've got, but that's why you've got to be strong enough in your own skin, as it were, to be able to do that and leave the door. The best thing to do is then do that and then buy the brand, does <laughs> the other one, which is in effect what Tom Gamble do, don't they? You know, the, the, those big, conglomerates you know they they buy they buy the brands in the different markets so i don't care whether you're young old you know i've got the brand to suit you and in effect what vw have done within cars you know mm -hmm. nice, whatever sort of car you want from luxury to sports to cheap to you know we've got the brand that suits you but, um, rather than extending the brand so far that you know you, you don't actually achieve anything um, <clears throat> I did like the, the 1970s VW. We, you know, the 1970s VW will stay ugly longer. <laughs> Interesting one. But, uh, but, um, cool. So, law of singularity. Then, in each situation, only one move will produce substantial results. What was your take on this one then, Gary? Any, any thoughts?
Oh, can't, can't hear you for some reason, Gary. Sorry, there we go. Oh, there go. Um, this, 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 I think, is like you know, just having about a main focus. Um, you know, don't, don't. I think it was an example in the book. Um, you know, if you get into everything, you can lose your way, sort of thing. Yeah. Um, which you know touches on some of the previous laws. Um, but you, you know, it's for, for for us for an MT, it's it's row row. You know, yeah. There's discussions at the moment. Do we try other things? You know. But if we do that, do we do it under a different brand? Do we do we lose what you know NMT? You know, is what we've built that primary yeah. word for uh, Roro. And then is that then diluted if we try different things? It's mm. you know, but here it's saying no. This is your brand. This is what yeah. you do. Have that one word. Yeah. <clears throat> and it, it is interesting, isn't it? Because you get a feeling that when marketing starts, it's really exciting and. Um, you know, finding the niche and finding the brand and finding the message, and then you get it. And then all you've got to do is the same thing and not change it. <laughs> and you can see, you know, you build this marketing team to, to do this, and then they do it and it's successful. And they go, right, well, what's next then? Oh, shit, I've now got to keep all these people busy and, you know, uh, and energized and, you know, you imagine that we coca-cola their marketing team it's like what should we do no let's just do the same thing <laughs> <laughs> let's just do the same thing <laughs> um, so again i think there's a bit of a, a juxtaposition between these two things going on at, at that time uh, it's an interesting point though because um you, you think about sort of some of the most iconic and um you know well known, but also kind of critically acclaimed um, advertising. Mm. Um, you know, Guinness, Coca Cola. Um, you know, really strong, um, and it's where they've just got one product with, you know, and Coke. Okay, yes, I know. In the book, they do talk about you know, Coke trying to do new Coke and. Yeah. and you know what have you but actually the advertising for traditional coke coke is it's not you know the message is the same it's the same product it's not changed at all yeah. um so it's almost like that creativity switches from what is the message and gets directed into let's be really creative about getting it out there yeah yeah, and I think you're right. There's, if you look at their advertising and their brand, it, it over, you know, I don't know how long it's been going, 100 years, it's very, very similar, isn't it? Mm. <clears throat> it's just tweaking on the theme. You could put all the adverts side by side and, and you know, it, it, I suppose it brings it to a, you know, it's updated, so it's, it's mm. bringing new stuff into it, but the message is the same. You know, I think that you're right. That that is the creative. Don't reinvent it. You know, just have a slightly different way to to get the message across. Yeah. So, law of unpredictability. You know, um, you know. I think this just says the market will change. You've just got to be ready to you know to change with it. And and where businesses don't change, the and that's what I'm talking about. Uh, you know, BlackBerry. You know the market changed and and because of their culture they weren't able to sort of change and adapt quick enough so they were you know late to the the apps game um you know and the sort of you know um <clears throat> the, the 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 full screen um phones and and therefore you know they withered and died you know and you, you can see that across you know the high street and Across many many brands. To... Law of success. To... This, is, this is quite a good one, to... Bruce. What's your your take on the law of success? Um, yeah. Well. Um... I think, uh, well, as, as you saw in your slide, you know, um, you know, the fact that um, 
yeah, you've done well in the past doesn't necessarily mean you're going to do well in the future. And yeah, I think, uh, yeah, it's true. Yeah, some some companies, some company owners, yeah, they yeah get an ego, get a build up a, an arrogance, and um, perhaps don't even start to see when things are, are going wrong. And uh, you know, things can move quite quickly. And uh, uh, yeah, so yeah, there's that side to it. Um, yeah. I think, you know, it says the last paragraph, you know, small companies are mentally closer to the front than the big companies. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's, it's the sort of, you know, the dinosaur thing that, again, this re reduction down to two big players, by nature, they have to become bigger dinosaurs. And, you know, eventually they become harder to steer, to change. You know, as soon as you go to a listed company, you know, you're no longer running your company it's it's about p l's it's about you know reporting and that's why you know branson delisted virgin you know uh, because you know you get to a point where you know i can't move as quickly as i want to move and make a decision and, and do things and um at that point it's you know if you don't do something then then the brand just disappears which was you know you, you've seen you've seen that with you know yeah, likes of, I suppose, the top shop, you know, um, Philip Green and that side of things, you know, although he's one of those people that probably wasn't uh, questionable ways to get as big as he did. Uh, so, yeah, so just, and I think a really good book on this one, which we might do one day, is uh, the uh, How the Mighty Fall by Jim Collins. So after Good to Great, obviously some of those companies then failed, he wrote, how the mighty fall and that was all about things like hubris uh, and people believe their own crap and, and get away from what's actually happening so that's a good good little book as well uh, oh, uh, so law of, law of failure that you know I think we, we do talk about that quite a bit, that uh, things don't work. Um, but it's about, you know, it's about learning from those mistakes. Uh, yeah, it's hard to be first new category without sticking your neck out. Um, so it's, it's, it's balancing those up and look you know and it's that you know we talked about before that fail forwards you know fail fast you know if you're going to make a mistake try it learn from it move forwards so and uh you know and not dwell on it you know sometimes you do make a mistake and move into areas and then okay fine you know put your hand up move on um so um it is you just, i think it's just part of part of the whole process um, then law of hype um, this is quite an interesting one what's your take on this one Andy uh, need to refresh my memory on what this one was um, so he says that the more people shout about something the more problem they are <laughs> so, so no soft drink has received more hype than new coke uh, uh, yeah, one billion worth of free publicity. Um, I mean, less than sixty days after launch, they went back to classic. So. Yes, yes, and he was talking about um, where a lot of the hype is 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 around something is going to completely revolutionise the the market, and yeah, invariably it it doesn't. Yeah. Um, perhaps because it's you know it's a bit too radical or, or it, the timing's not right um he talked about um talked about video phones didn't he uh, which is quite amusing um uh, <laughs> yeah, who's, who's gonna want a video on their phone so. yes yes and and then kind of said that the way that they were presented and the hype was um not around um 
aren't video phones great, but it was around, you know, the, the death of air travel because nobody would need to fly anymore to go and see food because they just have a video call with them instead. Yeah. Um, and yes, here we are having a meeting on a video yeah. call. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, uh, but the airlines are still doing perfectly well. But then, but then I mean, I think that's, that's a really good example because if you think about, you know, Zoom, mm. how much hype did Zoom have to put in about Zoom? No. Mm. Yeah. I mean, that, that's the key to this is if you really have to shout about how great your product is, then it's probably not that great. Yeah. If it's great, people will buy it and they will tell people about it and it, and it mm. will it will grow and i think in today's world of social media that the speed of that is a thousand times quicker than it was in these days mm. yeah. you know, a, me a message you know if you go back to when you were at school you know the, the latest fad thing you know i would say probably took about a term to get around mm. yeah you know, and i have kids now but i'm guessing that the latest fad now is about a week yeah. <laughs> for the next fad <laughs> and Facebook must be a great example of this because at the time when Facebook was growing didn't advertise at all as far as no. I can tell it yeah. was all viral yeah now they're advertising yeah yeah, yeah. what does that yeah. tell you yeah exactly yeah yeah so we, that's a great point uh yeah they get to a point where okay the numbers are dropping you know yeah. we're losing more customers than we're gaining therefore now we've got to hype it up Mm. Mm. Time to sell your Facebook shares. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, that was about six months ago. <laughs> <laughs> so then, then we got the law of you know. I, I think this was the the fad one, wasn't it? This was the law of acceleration that you know fads do happen. You know, and and you get in, you get your money, you get out quickly. Um, but the trend builds up over time, you know, and that that's the long the long term. I, I don't I, I I've never seen an issue with a fad, you know. Mm. But don't pretend it's anything but a fad. Yeah, I I must admit I didn't entirely agree with this one. I I don't think Ninja Turtles could have been the next Barbie if they hadn't, you know. Just, some things are just always going to be yeah. bad, aren't they? They're going to come and go. Um, and and some things, you know, like Barbie, I mean, it's, it's just it's a bit more generic in a way. Um, and it was obviously new in its time, but... Um, is in order to compete with that now, you've got to do something that's a little more off the wall. Um, but because it is, it doesn't, it, it's not going to last as long. Yeah. It's interesting, you know, here's the paradox. If you're faced with a rapidly rising business with all the characteristics of a fad, the best thing you could do would be to dampen the fad. You stretch the fad out, becomes more like a trend. Yeah. I, I would agree. I, I I would say no. Yeah. Make make your money, get in, get out. Yeah, understand. This if you don't, somebody else is going to come and eat well. there, aren't they? And it probably is a fad. You know, there are certain things that will be popular. You mm. know, Rubik's cubes will be popular for a while until everyone's done it, and then yeah. that's it. This is these are not life changing things. Mm. You know, the electric car is not a fad. You know, suddenly everyone's going to buy an electric car and then go, oh, actually, you know, don't really want an electric car anymore. You know, that's not a, that's mm. a fad. Um, that's a way that the, the world, you know, that's an evolution. So it's, it's understand what's, I think, what's an evolution, a change, or just a sort of, a, you know, three-legged monkey that just looks good for, you know, for a period of time, but then has no real use on a long-term basis. So, but you know that's, that's that's the fun you know well understanding what is a fad and what isn't a fad and you know where this is what you sort of basically gambling with on the stock exchange aren't you where's my term returns and where's my short-term 
quickly mm. in and out. So, so number two, you know, really is that sort of law resource, you know, without adequate funding, you know, you do have to spend money on marketing. Um, but as we've always said, it's, you know, it really is about test and measuring it. It's not just chucking money at something in the hope that it will work. Um, you know, I've, I've got sort of uh, yeah, a client that was spending 20, about 20 grand a month on Facebook advertising um, to, to grow the audience. And, you know, and we were, the sales were good um but profitability wasn't mm -hmm. and so we took a decision a few months ago to actually just stop the facebook spend completely and sales have halved so i've probably down 40 percent but profitability is well it's now profitable from making a loss to now profitable so, so I think there is this element. Sometimes you do have to spend it to build up, but then at a certain point, you've got to come back to profitability. And the, and the word on the street is the all the VCs now are being very, very um, picky on their e-commerce businesses. E-commerce in the VC world has fallen out of favour because 90% of e-commerce businesses don't make any money. And I've, I've, I've been looking at, at buying some so, um, um, and when I look at them, none of them make any money, but they still want stupid valuations. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Cool. So, uh, next book, I'm going to do uh, Matthew Side's Bounce, um, which uh, Matthew Side was the British number two world tennis champion, uh, which on the scale of, te of sorry, table tennis, um, which puts him about four millionth in the world, I think, something like that. But uh, but he, if, if you've listened, to, he does some good podcasts now. He's he's quite a good uh, good speaker. Um, so it's a nice little book to really go on about uh, what makes talent. You know, is it born? Is it bred? You know, and some really good case studies in it. So it's a, it's a nice, it's a, it's a good little book for us to to read during the uh, the summer. So uh, I hope you, you'll enjoy that. And obviously the, the workshops are there for anybody that would like to come along for a bit more uh, education and uh, have a super day, guys, and uh, enjoy the next book. And I will see you uh, in a month's time. So, okay. Take care. Oh, thank you very much. Thanks Bye very much. Now. Take care. So, Bye. See you later.